Howdy, y'all, and welcome to the Business Networking Channel hosted by the Hispano Chamber of Commerce. I'm John Munoz. Don't turn that dial. This is the Business Networking Channel hosted by the Hispano Chamber of Commerce. There is a reason I'm dressed like this today. We have some very exciting guests and some wonderful news for our audience today. But before I uh, go there, let me introduce my co-host, Toby Rue. Toby? Hey, John, how are you? I have to tell you, you look just like little Stefano. <laughs> you have the best looking. I want to squeeze those little cheeks right there. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen and our members out there live, I'm telling you, we are here with some trailblazers. Dr. Margie Huerta, Arlinda Portillo, they're here. and We're going to have some great conversation with them. But I want to update, to you, update you all on some great events that the Hispano Chamber is doing, and I want to keep you abreast of what's happening in the month of October. Right now, October 8th, the Hispano Chamber of Commerce is having their uh, annual golf tournament, and that's at the Las Cruces Country Club, and we are looking still for some teams if you're interested out there. Also, uh, in, in honor of our guest today, we're having the October 15th, Doniana Community College is having their celebrity golf and dance event, and we're going to hear a lot about that here pretty soon by some fantastic and dynamic women. Uh, October 29th, coming to the end, the the Halloween, the hallowed hour, we're going to have our first annual scholarship costume bash. And I tell you what, we're going to have some fun with that. You're going to get dressed up, <laughs> we're going to scare some people, but we're going to raise some funds for some scholarships. And uh, this year we're having a great partnership with the Tough Enough to Work Pink campaign. And so we're going to give you some more information as that comes uh, together. Uh, and then November 3rd, Squeezing off into the next month, we're going to do our middle school recognition program, and it's the first annual will be held at the Doniana Community College, and this is a great event. We're reaching out to middle school students. We're reaching out early intervention. We're partnering up with Junior Achievement. Fantastic things are happening in the Hispano Chamber of Commerce. Members out there and viewers, we want you to come on, be a part of it. Hispano Chamber of Commerce is your team, the BNC team here at the Business Networking Channel. So John, that's kind of what we have on tap today, but boy, I'm excited to get back to some uh, Hey Baby, Que Paso? <laughs> now this is pretty exciting times here. We have some very special guests, um, some wonderful folks in the community, uh, wonderful friends of ours, wonderful friends of the Hispano Chamber of Commerce, and uh, you know, Toby, let's, let's introduce the Dr. Margie Huerta. Basically, the best thing that has happened to education in southern New Mexico, or actually all of New Mexico, since I, I don't know when. And, uh, so you are the goddess of, our, of education, or the high priestess of education, whatever. <laughs> so uh, definitely, in all seriousness, you, you have made a tremendous impact in the lives of many, many people, especially uh, young people here in southern New Mexico. And so we appreciate you. We're going to talk to you in a little bit about what DACC is doing, uh, some of the special events that are coming up, uh, and so we are very anxious to get to that. Toby, we also have uh, whom I call the, the godmother of the Hispano <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. She uh, is. Arlinda Portillo, yes, Arlinda. She is. You know, can you imagine, you know, Arlinda, you know, and, and actually Dr. Huerta uh, helped uh, start the Hispano yeah. Chamber of Commerce a few years back. Yeah. And could you imagine that uh, uh, these youngsters, Toby and I, <laughs> well, we're not that young. Well, I am. I don't know about Toby. You know, uh, you know that uh, we would have our own TV show. We'd have a publication. You know, and it's growing. And it's because of the work that that you did many years Absolutely. ago, or some years ago, mm -hmm. um, to get us to where we are today. So, uh, it's 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 good to have you here. Yeah, thank and John. I'm going to add to those in our in our audience. I did not miss a beat when I said Trailblazers. And John, thank you for bringing the history up. Every community has to have organizers and leadership, and these two women that we have today have <laughs> definitely done that in their own right, in their own right, mm -hmm. whether it be for the community, mm -hmm. whether it be for education, or just for stewardship of good, mm -hmm. you know, business, you guys have really mm -hmm. done that. So Thank you. So we'd like to turn this over to you all because it's all about you, <laughs> and it's all about you, Margie. So, <coughs> John, I think we're here to talk about one particular event the 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 dance and the and the golf tournament. Yes. But before we get there, I want to step back and ask a quick question. Give us an overview of what the community college is doing, Dr. Worker. Oh, thank you. Let me start off by thanking both you and John for the invitation to be here. I feel like we're amongst friends at a, at a at a dinner, just having a good conversation about what's happening. Mm -hmm. But I'll, let me tell you a little bit about your community college. 
This community college is the fastest growing community college in the state. We continue to see double digit enrollments every single semester. We're That's expanding. Phenomenal. We offer programs in the evening and, and students can get their degrees on the, in the weekends as well too. We recognize that many of our students are evening or mature students wanting to get either a second um, a career started or just coming to get additional certification. So we make sure that we address the needs of those students. So we continue to expand. We had our groundbreaking ceremony in Chaparral just a couple of weeks ago. We hope to have our campus there in Chaparral next to the high school built by this time That's next awesome. year. Uh, and then in a few months, we'll also have a groundbreaking for Hatch. So your local community college is serving over 18, 19,000 students in our community. They're from all over Southern New Mexico. And we're so proud to be really the workforce training hub for Southern New Mexico. That's Dear phenomenal. Fantastic. I mean, you know, when you think about that many students, yes. you know, and the <coughs> yes. growth you've had, it's just yes. been phenomenal. And, and I think that's really uh, basically due to leadership, you, your administration, your staff. I mean, students always speak very, very highly of you. I mean, I, uh, you know, a few years back when I went to school, I don't think that I <laughs> could say the same thing about my president at the university. I mean, I respected him, but yeah. it, there wasn't, uh, <laughs> there wasn't, uh, uh, I, I did actually, but uh, he was, uh, you know, totally a, a different, mm -hmm. I would say a different leadership style. Mm -hmm. You know, and when it comes to leadership though, you know, with that, obviously f to provide the services that you provide, yes. Yes. you need funds. Yeah, and exactly. so this is kind of what, what brings us to, to the events that, that you all are holding. Exactly. Correct? I mean, and, and how does you, this impact and, and you know, Toby and John, and I know that Erlinda has a few things to add as well. You know, one of the things in terms of our students is that many of our students are first generation That's college correct. students, meaning mm -hmm. that many of our, the majority of our students are the first in their family to come to college. Mm -hmm. um, their parents have never even walked into the hallways of, of a college before. And so they're, they're new at learning how to apply for financial aid, where to go to get your schedules. All of that is new to our students. And a big factor in our students, uh, whether they come or not to college, are, is financial assistance. And so um, what we want to do with this event, and I know Ms. Portillo is going to have a few things to add about that in a few minutes, is that we're trying to raise scholarships. We're trying to raise funds for students so that th no student will ever not come to college because of lack of funding. For me, I'm trying to remove that barrier, and I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing at Doñana Community College until that <coughs> ends. We need to raise money so that students who want to come to college, who are excited, who want something more, who want to change the cycle in their families, will come to college. Well, and so, you know, we had a conversation on this before, and Orlando, you and I have spoken to this several times, and John, you've even made a couple of uh, jokes and references to this, but. It's no doubt that there are children and people out there that need that extra or special chance. I, for myself, was an at-risk student when I was younger, mm -hmm. and the community college was my key mm -hmm. to the doorway of education. Uh, I went on to have my master's degree, but I started out at the community college mm -hmm. entrance. So I can tell you and speak firsthand, and there are many people in our community that have done this, mm -hmm. to know that that is the doorway for first generation people. Exactly. Now, you also added that scholarships and fundraising, and if I understand this correctly, Linda, wasn't that your particular expertise and getting people together, having a nice cup of coffee or tea or whatever, and making things happen? Is that what you've done? And that well, I, <clears throat> I guess I can put it in a nutshell because I think when I come to see a, um, a sponsor, now they just say, what event and how much? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I have a reputation already, and, and, and it's a reputation I enjoy because I think all of, the, all of the projects that I've worked for have been beneficial to this community. But of course, my first love is education. I, I have spent my career, <clears throat> excuse me, in education. And so for me, it's, it's an easy sell um, because I think this community realizes that our our youth base is large. Our mm -hmm. youth base is at a at a crossroads of, you know, getting into the college mm -hmm. track. And for for Dr. Huerta's strategic plan, I think she's she's very well placed in terms of what this community needs. It needs to educate its base, and it needs to supply the workers for the workforce. Right. So it's 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 a win-win situation for. 
everyone in this community. It, it's a great model, you know, and when you think about it, you know, and I joke about, you know, I said, I joke about mm -hmm. it, you know, I was an at-risk student, you know, Toby mm -hmm. doesn't believe me, he thinks <laughs> I'm kidding, but I was com completely at risk. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people make uh, different um, impacts uh, in, in, in your life. Exactly. Uh, you know, and, and I remember this this last event, I think it was, where some uh, scholarship recipients, you know, and, and or Linda, you and Ken uh, did, oh, yes. and, and Christy did a great job in organizing that, but boy, you know, there was a lump in your throat and some people sure. were crying. With, when you heard the stories of the, the exactly. recipients exactly. and the scholarships and the funds they were, they were getting right. to further their education exactly. and what they had accomplished, and you, you move that forward and you see people in the community, you know, doctors, judges, right. um, other uh, business people mm -hmm. in the community that mm -hmm. went to DACC and right. started there okay. and got their education there. That, that, that makes a difference. You know, that's, that's, that's worth, uh, that's actually priceless. Well, it is. And, and I'll tell you, and please, Marjorie, make sure that we understand this. <clears throat> Being the president of an organization, it's not all about the fun and games. There's actually a lot of strategic planning. Mm -hmm. There's oh, a yes. lot of political uh, bartering and negotiating. Yeah. And, and then we have these funding issues. I mean, the, the burden that you yes. must carry, but then every time you mm -hmm. step out in those mm -hmm. public, I mean, we got mm -hmm. the smile, mm -hmm. people know yes. that you're here exactly. to do business, but to make friends and make relationships. And, and when you all come together, I always know that the smile comes mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then the yes, how can I help you come second? And I Absolutely. love that about you. Well, I appreciate that very much, but I will tell you, it is a lot of work, and we do have a strategic plan, and our strategic priority number one is improving graduation rates. So yes, there's a lot of hard work, and I think that the reason that we're seeing so much growth at our college is because we are very strategic. We think about it. I'm a planner, and the whole team is a planner. We come together as one team to address the needs of our community. I am very much involved in our community, as is Erlinda, as is Ken Theus, who couldn't be with us here today, or we wish he was here, but he couldn't be with us, and Christy Martin as well. They're a part of Christy Martin and Erlinda and Ken are our development team. But but in terms of the college, we can't see this tremendous growth and this ranking in our state regarding DACC. And, and this is something that I say, our, our capital projects have been ranked first and second in the entire state. And that's when we compete, when you think about us competing with 21 other community colleges in the state, six universities, there's 27 organizations in the state that all compete for capital projects or funding for capital projects. DACC in the last three years has ranked number one or number two. I mean, that takes a lot of work. So you're right. Uh, what people see of us is the smiles and that's because we work so hard but we also understand that without hard work, without planning, Correct. things won't happen. And we're working on behalf of our students in our community. And that's where this brings us to the nuts and bolts. That's of right. <laughs> how, how does this happen? You know, it brings us to this cowboy hat. Yes. This yeah. is why. And I absolutely <laughs> like that look, John. I mean, that is well, you know, one good uh, looking cowboy. I was going in a for suit, the, by the way. <laughs> in a suit. <laughs> well, I, I just want to say, John, had we known that you, you know, look so good in a cowboy right. hat, we would have used you on our poster. You've <laughs> <laughs> have been a poster child. Poster child. I was going for the Johnny Canales look. That's what <laughs> I, I remember Johnny Canales. Hola, hola. Take it away, John. <laughs> But uh, Texas, right, right? exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, you even brought the accent to it too. Uh, well, you yes, brought the yes, accent. Yes, you brought too. the hat. <laughs> <laughs> He's got what, it all. What else is coming? Uh, I get no, a I, 